Good morning, muffins. I am undergraduate alum and soon-to-be master's student Kevin. Today, I will be presenting my gap year cap 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 capstone project and my first cross-department adventure project, the programmable tech reduction device. Wait, isn't electrical engineering and computer science one department in your school? Shh, don't worry about that. As many may know, I have Tourette syndrome, which basically means that my brain leaks excessive signals, causing me to do involuntary actions called tics. These include spilling out noises, offensive sentences, gestures, swinging my arms, or cracking my joints. Before I do an action, there is a pre-motionary urge similar to a sneeze or an itch. One of the inner parts of my brain floods the motion control center going, you have to do this action. And if I try to ignore the urge, it will just occupy my thoughts until I execute that action. So I shall utilize my knowledge in computer science to vanquish this problem. Earlier this year, I found this paper from Nottingham University, where they showed that electrical pulses to the median nerve can reduce the tics in individuals with Tourette's. In a subsequent paper, they created a wearable device that delivered the pulses and tested it on 121 patients. The results are promising. So this will be my summer project, to replicate the product detail on the paper and test it on myself. Disclaimer, this is not a paid summer research term. I received zero award money or salary and paid out of pocket for extra components myself. Though I'm able to reuse the Raspberry Pi Pico W's from my fourth year project course. Now, uh, for those who are not into CS or you are but live under a rock, a Raspberry Pi Pico W is a microcontroller, just like an Arduino board, where you can put code in it and control an electrical circuit. The W stands for wireless, in case you're wondering. This silver block here on the Pi Pico W is the chip enabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication. The EECS department has been very nice, letting me borrow equipment. And a huge shout out to Mr. Jaspo, who helped me with the soldering. Well, cause if I try to do it myself, given my motion takes, I, I probably receive a 4,000 degree burn and a, and a fun trip to ER. Without the student health plan, by the way. After getting the idea, I first looked up what exactly is a median nerve stimulation, as mentioned on the paper. It is actually more commonly called transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, or TENS for short, where electrical current is applied to a nerve in your body through contact between a device and your skin. From what I can understand, applying this to my median nerve, which is this line on the forearm, can train my nervous system to automatically suppress or ignore the urge, forcing me to tick. The paper uses 12 hertz with a pulse width of 200 microseconds, which means the pulses happen 12 times a second and each pulse lasts for 200 microseconds. To start, I bought a ready to use TENS machine from Amazon. The electrical current is delivered through these conductive electro pads coated with adhesive to stick to your skin. These can be used a few times before the adhesive becomes stale and you have to yeet them to the trash. You can also buy reusable ones made of carbon rubber where you add gel to them each time before use. Another source I read mentioned that I need to increase the power until it goes to the motion threshold, which is the lowest settings to see visible twitching in my hand. For an initial trial, I pose myself as I watch the paper's attached video about a subject with corpulalia just like myself. Usually, seeing others tick have a chance of triggering my ticks. Not this time though. On the surface, it does seem to work and it's already very promising. Now, in order to replicate the effect, I hook up the TENS machine to the oscilloscope and inspect the signal where the strength is set to that motion threshold. Um, it peaks at about 110 volts. Now, how the heck can I get a Raspberry Pi Pico to do that? So I then look up many designs on how to create a tense device from scratch, as well as digging for relevant parts I can afford. 
Also, email Professor Jackson from Nottingham University for pointers. Ah, uh, no dice. I guess they need to keep it confidential for their startup company. Best I can come up with using widely available parts is this. Starting with a 9V battery as a power supply, it is boosted to 40 volt using a DC step-up converter, which then powers a half-bridge driver. Traditionally, these are used for driving motors by taking an input signal from an Arduino outputting 3.3 volts and powering the motor at a higher voltage. The Raspberry Pi Pico will be coded to output a signal to the driver, and the driver will give the higher power signal to my skin. It can only deliver a square wave signal at about 40 volts since the voltage is set by the step-up transformer and the limit is around there. All other designs involve buying dedicated parts from producers and designing then printing a circuit board myself. Uh, yep, not affordable, all right. I do know that delivering the 100 volts detailed in the paper is definitely possible. If only I have more knowledge in electrical engineering to design the full circuit. Uh, yeah, welcome to Canada. We, we have no minors in electrical engineering to go with our CS degree. Anyways, another paper shows that, in a tense system, motion strength is proportional to the pulse width. I assume it's all about the uh, total electrical energy apply, aka voltage times time. So even if we can only do 40 volts, I can just try to increase the pulse width in the code and see what happens. With the help of Mr. Jaspo, we soldier the circuit for testing. For now, the Pico is powered by a USB connection to a computer, which also displays the code's print outputs for ease of debugging. I coded this desktop application that communicates with the Pico via Bluetooth GAT. Uh, no, no, not GAT, not, not that one. GAT is a protocol for sending data via Bluetooth between devices. Here, I can change the settings and send them to the Pico, as well as tell it to start and stop. I hooked it up to the oscilloscope and set up the settings. And nice, it worked. I then put the electro pads on my arm and start it. Yep, I can feel the pulses. When I increase the pulse width, it does feel stronger. This is already looking great. Now, it's time to test if the device actually works or not. Here, I set up this little experiment to see if it does reduce my ticks. Disclaimer, this is by no means a rigorous or formal medical experiment. It is more qualitative and subjective based on my feelings. But I mean, this entire project is more about the electrical engineering than the medical. Uh, yeah, fellas, if I wanted to work in the health science department, I would have been there already. I start by recording myself going to random Wikipedia articles and reading them out loud for six minutes. Doing some sort of active activity instead of sitting still has a higher chance of my text being triggered naturally, so we can see the numbers better. Then I make and eat a cup of Nongshim spicy cup noodles. Ah, I used to love them so much. Remember to drink all the broth for the full effect. The spice will cause my text to flare up, and this is the exact reason why I haven't had them for years. Nothing says science more than making myself suffer. After that, I record myself reading random Wikipedia articles for another 6 minutes. For the active group, I apply the tense pulse on my arm as I'm reading, while for the control group, I did not. From the recordings, I can tally up the types of ticks and instants of occurrence to see if there is a difference. Okay, let's see how it goes. Here are the results after I review the recordings and tally them up. Numerically, you can see a sort of significant reduction in the amount of tick instances. In terms of subjective feeling, I also feel quite differently when I'm applying the pulse. I feel more at ease and worry less about having the urge to tick. Though this could also be a placebo effect. But so far this is already a huge success and I would call this a win. 
Also, Ben wanted to 3D print a case to put the parts inside and add a strap so it can be truly be a wearable device like the one in the paper. Unfortunately, I ran out of time as life got in the way and I had to prepare for the start of my master's degree. I, I will definitely revive this project in the future. So that's my achievement for the summer. For now, it will sit in the uh, metaphorical freezer until I take it back out next summer. Either way, I'm finally wrapping up my gap year. I'm back for round two, baby. The gap year was meh in terms of relaxing, I say. There might be a story time doodles in the near future where I would talk more about it. As school years take up my time again, I think I will switch to making videos with a quicker turnover. Thank you everyone for your support. Love y'all. Anyways, if you liked the video, give a like, leave a comment, tell me how I can improve or what you want to see next. And subscribe if you want to see more. See you nada! Living the dream